Well, I got to meet him through the new school. I was going to school there, and he was teaching. I think he taught like an ensemble, and he also taught like a guitar class. You know, it was like ten of us and, and him. And the thing that I was amazing to me was like, besides just seeing him up close and seeing him play the guitar very quietly, we always play quietly, but just the sound he would make it right in front, you know, just the way he touched the instrument, you know, was incredible to see, you know, there it is, there's the sound. He just plays a chord, you know, you know, personality in sound, you know. Uh, but the thing was, he would basically play, as a teacher, he was very much about open-mindedness and you know, kind of wanting to know. He was fascinated with how many different ways people played the guitar, and everyone had a different guitar, and had a different way of holding it, and different pick, and he was kind of fascinated with all the different ways people could play it. And so his, his teaching, I mean, it was, it was more he would play with us, and he would, what, I, what, we, what we all noticed was that he would play behind us and make everybody kind of sound good, and then we would play with each other, and then we would sound like we really sounded, which was not so good, you know? So. There was the thing of like, first of all, the feeling of playing with him was like, wow, this is the best rhythm section I've played with. The whole thing, you felt the rhythm, you felt the harmony, you felt the, you know, he was listening to you. He was lifting you up. He was making you, he was challenging you, but at the same time, he was making you sound better. They say it's like, if you play tennis with somebody who's really good, you get better because the ball is coming at you already, has a certain amount of intensity. So you have to, you raise your game to meet that level, you know, so that's kind of what it was. He would make us sound better than we really were. So that was the thing early on, like I felt like, wow, that's, I noticed that too when I, when I was, had an ensemble at a different school. I went to Rutgers for a year and Kenny Barron was the teacher of our ensemble. And he would sit down at the end of the, end of the and play a tune with everybody. And everybody sounded better when he was playing. And Jim had the same thing in a more intimate way, just in a duo situation. He would just make people sound. So I was like, how do you do that? You know, what's the key? That's, that's something worth dedicating your life and your time to. Not, that encompasses, of course, learning about rhythm and harmony and how to play your instrument, but it's also another thing of like the will to make other people sound better and to lift the music, you know. So, and, and getting to know Jim as a person, just an just incredible mind, incredible intellect, an incredible, you know, sense of humor, a credible, you know, sense of, uh, of, of compassion and understanding and, and just was a, Beautiful person. I feel lucky that I got to meet him when I was about 20 and uh, stayed in touch. You know, we played a few times over the years. And I was, I was lucky to be on his last performance at Lincoln Center. Yeah. Maybe a month or so, three weeks before he passed away. Played and uh, played a few tunes with him. And, it, you know, I, that's, I feel very, very fortunate to have yeah, come in contact with him and been able to, you know, I was I was young when I first met him, and and uh, you know, and he was young. He was about he was barely sixty years old when I first met him. So so between sixty and eighty four or so.